YouTube, what is good? Today I wanted to answer one of my most frequently asked questions. I get this question on pretty much every video I post in relation to the Fuji camera. So today I wanted to break it down for you, explain to you why I chose the Fuji X-Pro2 over the Fuji X-T2. Right now those are Fujifilm's two staple cameras. Obviously they have the medium format camera that they're releasing as well as the fixed lens, uh, other cameras that are out like the X100 series. But the X-T2 and the Fuji X-Pro2 are the two main interchangeable lens cameras. So before I explain to you why I went with the X-Pro2 over the X-2T, also, if I say X2T or X-T2, if I mix it up, it's my bad. I don't own the camera, I don't use it every day, so I might say the name wrong. But before I explain why I went with the X-Pro2, let's break down a few really quick specs about the two cameras. So the X-Pro2 versus the X-T2, they're both weather sealed, they both have Wi-Fi capabilities. One difference, the X-Pro2 can only shoot 1080p video, whereas the X-T2 can shoot 4K video. The X-Pro2 has no tilt screen, the screen on the back is attached to the camera, whereas the X-T2 has a tilt screen that you can tilt up and uh, basically like get the camera low and not have to be laying on the ground. The X-Pro2 has this awesome, awesome hybrid viewfinder, whereas the X-T2 only has an electronic viewfinder, an EVF. The X-Pro2 shoots at eight frames per second, but if you have the back screen display on, I think it only shoots at three frames per second. The X-T2 shoots at eight frames per second, and if you put the battery grip on, it shoots at 11 frames per second. Uh, the X-T2 has a battery grip option, whereas the X-Pro2 does not have the battery grip option. They're both 24.3 megapixels, and they're both priced right around two grand. They're not super far apart in price. So even after that super quick rundown of that short list of specs, it seems pretty obvious that the X-T2 is the better camera and the obvious choice, right? It is true. So let me explain my thoughts on these two cameras and my thoughts on why I went with this one and which one I think you should go for if you're a certain type of person. Now keep this in mind. I am not like a tech freak. I don't know all the technical aspects of both cameras. I don't sit around and break down these technical pieces. So keep that in mind. I'm giving you this from the perspective of a photographer, from a camera user, someone who's using the camera. So with that out of the way, let me break this down for you. The X-T2 is a great camera. It is an awesome camera. It is a camera I recommend. And if you only want to use one camera body, you only want to have one camera system to do as much as you possibly can with, the Fuji X-T2 is the camera for you. I recommend it. I think it's a great camera. I think it is a mirrorless replacement to a DSLR system. So if you're trying to have one camera body made by Fuji, go with that one. It's probably the better choice. It shoots faster, focuses faster. Uh, it can have more battery life. It can be a pro camera workhorse. But if you're like me and you're used to your DSLR system and you don't necessarily want to abandon it because you like it, the X-Pro2 may be the camera for you. So I've already broke this down here and there in a few other videos on my channel. So if you've already heard this, my apologies. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Basically, I got the Fuji X-Pro2 knowing I did not want to get rid of my Nikon system. I like my DSLR system. I like using it for work. I like using it for professional work. If I was hypothetically going to shoot sports, I'd want to do it with my Nikon because I'm used to how the camera works. I'm used to the dials. I'm used to everything about it. But I'm also a firm believer in the type of camera you're using makes the type of photo you want. And what I realized in my work, the more I progressed with DSLRs, the better the cameras got, the better the lenses got, the bigger the system itself got. The cameras got bigger, the lenses got bigger. And as that started happening, I started shooting intimate moments with family, intimate moments with friends, just random things here and there, less and less. Basically, the more I invested into my DSLR system and into my professional photography career, the more it took away from the hobby and the enjoyable photography that got me into this career in the first place. Everyone starts in photography just taking pictures of their friends, taking pictures of moments, capturing you know their life. That's what gets you on this path into photography as a career. And as I went down that road, I realized I wasn't doing this anymore and I wanted to fix that. So for me, the Fuji X-Pro2 is the perfect camera to start capturing those moments I just described. One, it's small. 
you know, when you're in a social gathering or you're just out shooting for fun, casual, you're traveling, whatever it is, and you don't want a giant camera, this is perfect because it's small, compact, it's not intrusive. People might not even think that this is a professional camera, but in reality, the photo you're taking with this camera often beats the DSLR quality that you're getting with like a Nikon or a Canon system. Some of my favorite best photos I've taken in the last five months were captured with this camera. The second great thing and the second reason I went with the X-Pro2 is this right here, this viewfinder. Now, if you're someone like me who is very used to a DSLR, you're used to looking through the viewfinder and seeing the real world, seeing exactly what's in front of you the way it is, and then adjusting your settings accordingly to get what you want. Where when you're using an EVF, you can actually see the adjustments being made and see how your photo is gonna come out before you actually take it, which is really cool. It's a great thing, it's a great way to learn, it's a great way to get better exposure, but for me, it's not necessarily something I like. I like being able to look out into the scene, see what's actually there, and then manipulate my settings accordingly. I'm not a huge fan of the EVF. So that's really a simple abridged rundown of why I went with the X-Pro2. All the things that I really like about my DSLR system and now putting it into a smaller package that I can basically use whenever I don't wanna use the DSLR, and I can still get all the professional quality that I love out of a great camera. So I think that about wraps it up. That's my breakdown of why I went with the Fuji X-Pro2, how I feel it stacks up versus the X-T2. I really think the X-T2 is a better camera. I think you can do a lot more with it. But for me personally, in my application of the camera, the X-Pro2 was the way to go for me because I think it's the perfect camera to pair up with a DSLR system and use it to take the place of the DSLR when you don't necessarily need it. I made this analogy in another video and I'm gonna make it again today. This Nikon that I'm filming this video on, this is like a work truck. It's the truck you take to work every day, you throw gravel in the back, it's got water bottles all over the floor, you don't care if it gets dirty, but it's a great tool, it's reliable, it gets you where you need to go, and you can depend on it. That's how I feel about this Nikon. But this Fuji X-Pro2, this is like that motorcycle or that Porsche that you keep in your garage. You take it out when you wanna have fun, when you wanna enjoy driving, enjoy getting from point A to point B. That's what this camera does for me. I love shooting with it. It makes photography fun. And if you have the luxury to have two camera systems, I definitely recommend checking out the X-Pro2 as the camera to take the place of your DSLR when you don't necessarily need it. But if you want that one camera, that one workhorse, that camera that can handle everything, you only want to have one body, the X-T2 is probably the way to go. It can handle everything. It's a great camera. It can do video. It can do stills. It can do sports. It's a beast. So if you want that one workhorse, go with the X-T2. I think that's about it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up button for me if it helped you, and feel free to drop comments below. I know I didn't cover all the fast technical aspects of the two cameras. So if you have any insight or anything you wanna say, let me know in the comments. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot more videos around the X-Pro2, whether we're just talking about it, going out to shoot with it, talking about the pictures from it, talking about new lenses, whatever it is. I'm using this camera more and more every week. I absolutely love it. So it's gonna be in a lot of videos. And uh, that's about it for today. Hope all you guys are having a good week and I'll see you next time.